Let's bring in Congressman Denny Hegg, Democrat of Washington and member of the House Intelligence Committee. Always good to see you. Thanks for joining me on this Saturday. You bet, Alex. Glad to be here. Well, so, Congressman, you heard the president say the decision about nominating a new FBI director is going to be quick, and there are potential nominees that are well known. We've got four being interviewed today. How does that square with what you've heard, and do you think it needs to be quick? Well, I, I would prefer quick, but I would also prefer painless, and that's what I'm worried about. Uh, he actually had a pretty fine director of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, and he got rid of him. But what's important going forward is that whomever he selects be of absolutely unimpeachable character and integrity, and frankly, the most important quality, be willing to speak truth to power. He evidently didn't like that in Director Comey. He desperately needs it. You're on the Intel Committee. From everything that you have heard, Congressman, should James Comey have been fired? Of course not. It is only in the theater of the absurd that you would fire the director of the FBI while the FBI was investigating you and your campaign operatives. Absolutely not. There's a constitutional law expert, uh, Lawrence Tribe, I know you're familiar with him, who says the president may also be at some sort of legal fault here. Here's his take. Take a listen. My loyalty is to the law and to the Constitution, in which case, again, Trump is guilty of attempting to suborn obstruction of justice. Either way, as with the first article of impeachment against Richard Nixon, this is a series of high crimes and misdemeanors all by itself. High crimes and misdemeanors. Do you agree? Has he really hit that level? Well, I'm not a lawyer and I don't play one on TV, Alex. And whether or not we're in a constitutional crisis, I don't know, but we're heading toward the biggest test of our republic since the Civil War. Gives me no joy to say that, but I believe that's the case. Here's my worry. The president is becoming increasingly angry and isolated, and the evidence of that is he shut down the visitor's log, he shut out the American press to the Oval Office, and my goodness, let in the Russian television. And lastly, of course, he's now threatening to cancel daily briefings, a staple of modern institution of the presidency. I've seen this movie before, Alex. It doesn't end well at all. What do you make of the report that came out overnight that the Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein does not believe a special prosecutor is necessary for the Russia investigation? I believe the Deputy Attorney General was as wrong-headed in that statement as he was in lending his name to the action or the letter that ended in uh, Director Comey being uh, released and discharged. Very, very wrong-headed. We need a special or an independent counsel. As a matter of fact, you and I don't need it, Alex. The Federal Bureau of Investigation needs it to restore any perception of compromise in their approach to this. The hardworking men and women at the FBI will continue this investigation, but it has to, all taint has to be removed. Frankly, I'm a belt and suspenders guy. I also think we ought to get back to an independent commission for the overall examination of Russian interference. Mm. I've been calling for that since December. Yes, you have. Um, with regard to those people you're talking about, though, within the FBI, Comey's firing has reportedly not gone down well inside <laughs> that bureau. Do you think that could turn out to be a real problem for the president going forward? And if so, how? I think first to mind it would be leaks. So, Alex, my mother always taught me that the only way to stop bullying behavior was to stand up to the bully. And I, I frankly think that the president now and his threat, his tweet threat to Jim Comey, has taken on the wrong, the wrong long, tall drink of water that Jim Comey is. This is a man of integrity and strength and a laser focus on what's best for America and the institution of the FBI and law enforcement. I may not have agreed with his judgment in each and every regard, but there's no doubt that that is his poll star. And I think that the president will rue the day that he attempted to bully Jim Comey. Hmm. How about the one-on-one -on -one dinner, Congress? And what's your take on that, the one in which the president reportedly asked Comey to pledge his loyalty? Does that at all ring true to you? And if it does, how unprecedented would that be for a president to ask that question of an FBI chief? Well, unfortunately, it is highly precedented in our adult lifetimes, and of course that era was known as Watergate. You know, I couldn't help but thinking on driving up here today to talk with you, Alex, that if Mitch McConnell and Paul Ryan were the congressional leaders during Watergate, Nixon would have never resigned. What is needed more than anything is for the members of the majority party, frankly, to put country above party and have the courage to speak truth to power. 
And you know, it's only been six days, six days since the French held their election. And the buildup to that was a lot of hype about Macron versus Le Pen. Le Pen was the nationalist candidate, clearly backed by Donald Trump. Macron was the moderate. And in the aftermath and his crushing victory, which was not anticipated, to the extent that he actually achieved it, people were trying to understand that. And they said, well, they got warned by Trump's uh, behavior. They didn't want that. And they were, they were warned about Russian interference. And they were ready to go on that. That's not, in my opinion, one of the principal reasons why Macron won so big. He won so big, Alex, because center-right politicians in France put country above party. They would be more naturally aligned with Le Pen, except for she was, un, she was unacceptable to them. And so they came out in support of Macron because they put country above party. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what Republican leaders in Congress need to do and are overdue in doing. All right. Washington Democrat, a member of the House Intelligence Committee, Representative Denny Heck. Thank you so much. Always good to see you, sir. Thanks. Thank you, Alex. Hey there. I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.